Hi, this is Paul, and welcome to part two in my Creating a Universal Pictures logo themed tutorial, or 3D text on Globe. So here is the finished result. Again, we have the 3D text coming around our 3D globe with space in the background. In part one, I showed you how to do the text part of this tutorial, and in part two, I will show you how to do the globe and space. So here is where we left off in part one, with just the text doing its thing chose different text this time. Let's go back into Avid Effects and finish it off. Okay, so what I need to do is bring in an Earth map. So I'm going to add image media, select this Earth map I got from NASA. Thanks, NASA. You can get it from NASA yourself, or you can find it in our template that we provide with this tutorial. And I'm going to do some color correction. It's too saturated, so I'm going to use Hue Saturation Lightness and bring that down about 20 ish or so and it's too dark so I'm going to add a levels gamma filter so just increase the gamma to about 2 and increase the output black to reduce the contrast to about 30 okay good so if I turned the object into a sphere right now I will get the sphere that I want to match the Universal Pictures logo now there are a few other cool globes you saw in the demo movies earlier and how we made those was we just added different effects to the globe so once you have this face track here any filter you add will become spherized uh, for example if you want a transparent globe just add a keys and matte filter like chroma key if I increase the lightness here I can get a fully transparent globe and if I rotate it around can actually see through it to all the continents on the other side. So really fun stuff you can play around with there by just adding new filters. One other quick example, we have a clouds generator that you can apply to give clouds to your earth. Just change the sky type to composite on original, maybe change the scale x so that it's more like atmospheric clouds, and you know do whatever you want. Maybe make a public service announcement about red clouds uh, pollution, it's bad. So let's get rid of it. Yay! <laughs> Earth is perfectly without atmosphere again. Okay, anyway, so this is the Earth we're going to use for the Universal Pictures. Now let's put it into the same 3D scene as our text. So to do that, just select both tracks and click on the Add 3D Model Container. Now they are intersecting as we expect them to. If I select the container and tumble it down, we can see how they share the same 3D space. Uh, we can also see that they're very close together, aren't they? So this is a live effect, which means I can still make changes to it. So I can shrink the earth, I can make it envelop the text. I do want to put a good buffer zone between the two, so easiest way to do that is just to shrink the earth. And that'll, I think that'll do well. Okay, now let's animate the earth so it is spinning. I'm going to create a linear interpolation on frame 0. I just go to the end and increase the spin to about 3659. That will give us one full spin, which will loop nicely should we loop this animation. Now, one thing I want to point out is that uh, I'm getting really fast updates in my animation, but you also might see this little seam here. That's because I'm in draft mode. So I like to work in draft mode so I can see the animation smoothly. You might want to see it at full quality the whole time. And it is a good idea to periodically check you know, full quality to make sure things are going to look how you think they look. Look how nice that map is. It holds up very well. Okay, so pointing that out, going back into draft mode, let's animate the position of the camera in our scene. So again, selecting the 3D container track, going into the camera, tab. So I'm just going to move the camera so that it starts on where the text comes out, which is about there. So first let's rotate it and let's zoom in the camera Z. Kind of a balancing act here. Push it off to the side, that looks good. And maybe just a tiny bit more like so. Good. All right, now let's change the interpolation to decelerate for all these, even the camera Y, even though we didn't change it. 
And where do we want to end up? Probably about here. I'm just going to click on the cross here to reset both X and Y. Set them to be hold at this point. Rotate back to zero and hold. And the camera Z, um, just far enough away so we can see the whole scene, which that looks good. Change it to hold. Okay, so previewing the animation here more or less matches the Universal Pictures opening from the 80s, which is what I wanted. I can do a quick preview to RAM. Another advantage of being in draft mode, I can pretty much preview in real time. Play it back just to make sure. Perfect. Okay, so a couple other things we can change here. First of all, the shape of the sphere starts off with a medium level of roundness. So if I select the sphere and go into the sphere tab, I can increase the smoothness of the sphere so it looks more round. Another thing I want to do is change the lighting in my scene to make it look more 3D. So let's go into the lights tab. Again, I'm in the 3D container. And let's just reposition this first light. Push it off to the side, bring it up, and pull it closer to us. Good. Now let's add a backlight, which is light number two. Check here. Push it off to the side. Push it down. And let's push it out in Z space as well. Okay, that looks good. Let's change the color of the backlight to blue because it's a law that backlight in space has to be blue, I guess. And looks much better. All right, we pretty much have all of our lights and camera motion set up. Now let's add the stars. So I'm going to keep 3D container selected, add another image, this star map also from NASA. Thanks, NASA, once again. And if we just add it in there, everything kind of seems fine. But in real space, stars are really far from the Earth. So we have to push them way back. So let's just take this star track, so to speak, and push it way back in position Z. And I mean, like, way back. OK, so now it's like a thumbnail of stars. But don't worry, because we can just increase the scale to compensate for pushing it so far back. And we just want it big enough so that we don't see any gaps there. And I mean, like, just big enough to cover that. And I think that's good. Going through the animation, and everything looks OK. OK, now we're just going to add some cool finishing touches to this whole thing. Uh, first of all, we can add a glow to the whole scene. I'm going to add BCC Glow. And this is another filter that looks different in high versus draft mode. So definitely check this one in full resolution so you know what you're getting. So you can see how it looks different there. And I just want it to apply to like where the Earth is. So I'm going to use the Pixel Chooser. Set that to be on. Go into the region. I'm actually going to view the chosen pixels and select inside oval. So this shows me where the glow will apply. I just want it to go to the center. And sizing it up differently there. And now let's blend the mask so it has a soft edge. And I go back to on for pixel chooser. And now it's the glow is nicely limited to the center of the screen. It's very intense though, so let's change that. Change the glow compositing to screen. It'll take some of the thunder out and just bring down the glow intensity overall a bit. About 0.6 should be good. Another cool thing we can do to the glow is to add a bump map. So if I select the sphere again, I can add a bump to make the continents look like they come out a little bit more. Just change the source to image. And in your timeline, find where bump map is right here and change it to that same still image we used for the Earth. The default bump map is a bit strong, so let's go back into the 
sphere and reduce the intensity to about 30 and much better. Okay, we are just about done here. There's one more thing I want to do and that is enable shadows between our objects. So if I select the 3D container, there's a shadows tab here. I'm just going to click on this first shadow and that gives me real 3D shadows cast between the objects. So you can adjust how accurate the map resolution is. You can also turn down the softness to get harder shadows. I'm going to do a little bit of both. Now this is very processor heavy, so I'm going to drop to quarter res just to make changes faster. Um, I still get an idea of how the shadows are going to look. And I can increase both of them like so. Go back and check in full to make sure I'm not being deceived. And that looks good. Okay, that is it. So I'm going to apply back to the host and I have created my own version of the Universal Pictures logo animation. So hopefully you liked what you saw here and want to see more. And you can find more tutorials and templates at our website. And that's at BorisFX.com.